Hello friends, welcome back to part 22 in my Tesla earnings forecast video review series. I am joined as always by my co-host Loki, who is fast asleep uh, in his bed, mere feet uh, in front of me, between me and my uh, 4K 70 inch TV where I display my desktop that you see here. Uh, so I've got this set up in a pretty cool way where I can see it, uh, and you can see it. And you can see me, and you can see Loki if he decides to get up and move around uh, without my cameras being in the way. All right, so let's pick up where we left off. We are booking it through the uh, uh, forecast thread. We've made it through tweet 36 of 69, so we are more than halfway through the tweets and uh, well more than uh, halfway through the videos. There will not be 44 videos in this series. <laughs> So in part 22, I'm going to cover a couple of areas that are just what I needed to make some charts that you saw. So in tweet 13 of the forecast thread, you saw a chart. I also made a video about it earlier in this series that showed uh, cash sales uh, excluding uh, leasing and regulatory credits. I needed a section in my forecast model where I could produce the numbers that are shown on that chart. So that's what this is giving you. Automotive cash sale units sold, uh, leased units sold. So some people pay cash uh, or, you know, financing to buy outright a car at the time they take delivery. Other people take delivery as a lease intending to make 36 months worth of payments to Tesla and then give the car back to Tesla and then Tesla sells the car to somebody else, right? So uh, one of the interesting ways to make a chart is to exclude the leased sales. So the first step is, okay, how many units were leased? Let's throw those out. That leaves us with how many cash sale units there are. I'm forecasting Q1 of 2023 will be the first quarter in Tesla's history where they have more than 400,000 uh, cash deliveries, and they might not make it, and if they don't, they won't be far from 400,000 uh, cash deliveries, I don't think. Then in the next section, we've got automotive revenue excluding leases. Uh, so those two lines are shown here. They're just linked up to what I have in my forecast above in the 500 section. We are all the way down in the uh, 1500 row section of my detailed model tab of my forecast model. Then you've got the cost of sales. Okay, how much of the cost of sales was leasing and how much was excluding leasing of the total. And then you've got the ASP. Okay, what was the ASP for cash sales? What was the total ASP? And how much was the ASP for leased vehicles? And we've got a cash sales, cost of sales per vehicle, lease sales, cost of sales per vehicle, and total automotive cost of sales per vehicle, giving us these uh, cash cost of sales percent, lease cost of sales percent, and automotive cost of sales percent numbers. So then at the bottom, I put in the regulatory credits so you can see what the automotive sales would be excluding the leasing and the regulatory credits number. That's the number shown on the chart, cost of sales excluding leasing, ASP excluding leasing and credits, cost of sales per vehicle excluding leasing, gross profit dollars per cash sale. That's a good number to know. So that's going to take a dip in Q1 is my forecast. And then uh, pop back up some in Q2 and continue improving throughout the rest of the year with gross profit percent on cash sales getting as bad as it'll get in Q1, the same as several other of the profitability metrics we've seen already, and then uh, improving back towards the levels we were seeing at the beginning of 2022. Uh, Non-GAAP EPS, excluding regulatory credits, is shown here as well. So you've got that number. And so that's what's uh, needed to make that chart that we saw earlier. Then I have a section here for the components of operating expense. So 
What's in operating expense? We had some charts uh, about this that showed SG&A and then total operating expenses by type. Uh, so here's the section where I have those uh, total up with CEO stock compensation that was low recently, becoming nothing for the next few quarters uh, before I start forecasting that to happen again. Maybe in the second half of this year, the board will announce a new stock compensation plan for Elon because he is currently working for free. Uh, that's what's in my forecast. We'll see what happens. Then restructuring and other, I'm not planning for any of uh, any layoffs to happen. Sometimes Tesla does layoffs and then those costs hit on this line, uh, giving total operating expenses. Uh, then if you want to look at just the subcomponents of SG&A, uh, you've got the CEO stock compensation on its own line here. Then there's a line here for SG&A stock compensation, excluding the CEOs stock compensation that's here uh, leaving you with the everything else that's in SG&A line so that's just one more way of breaking down those costs and then I have a section for non-GAAP 12 trailing month basis so I've got the dates the quarter ending dates that are approximate quarter end actual share price information here we don't know what the quarter end actual share price will be for Q1 or any of the future quarters yet because it hasn't happened uh, then there's a line here for 12 trailing month non-GAAP earnings and a line for 12 trailing month non-GAAP earnings per ending fully diluted share count. Uh, quarter ending uh, PE ratio is here. So we had a chart that showed the quarterly high share price, the quarterly low share price. Uh, and the quarterly high PE and the quarterly low PE. This is just the section where I'm making the calculations that deliver those numbers that end up on that chart. So a few sections here for what's on my chart. And then in this next section, I'm showing the per diluted share section. So this goes with tweet 23 from my forecast thread that was one of the last charts that I reviewed in this video series uh, with the stacked revenue per diluted share and expense per diluted share as side-by-side -side stacked bar charts where you can easily see how much the earnings is that's left over after you collect all this revenue per share and then uh, deduct all the costs and expenses per share. That's how you get to bottom line earnings. And then I've got a few different uh, smaller numbers here. Interest income, interest expense. Interest income is getting better. Interest expense is also getting better. Uh, it's hard to know how much the other income or expense net is going to be. Uh, this is where that foreign currency exchange impact hits. Then you got your income taxes line. Tesla will surely pay more in income taxes going forward because they're going to have more income uh, to pay taxes on, especially in the U.S. Uh, they won't pay as high a rate as some other corporations pay because they'll benefit from the Inflation Reduction Act's um, provisions for companies that produce uh, green energy products and sell electric vehicles and EV battery packs, uh, stationary storage, etc. So that's how we get to these uh, per share. Uh, this entire section is per diluted share. So down here at the bottom, every quarter you've got uh, shares outstanding diluted uh, as 1.000 exactly, which is what you want to see here <laughs> uh, because this is just dividing the diluted shares by the diluted shares. That should give you exactly one every time. But the uh, shares outstanding basic, this is just telling you what percentage of your uh, shares are already uh, outstanding as basic. The difference between these is that Elon has, you know, 9% uh, of shares outstanding coming to him if he wants to buy them at the stock price, uh, 
uh, where Tesla was trading when he agreed to work for uh, a stock compensation plan in mid-March of 2018. Uh, if he buys all those shares, then these numbers will be closer to the same number, but he hasn't exercised any of those. Yet, he has until March, you know, 15th or so of 2028 to buy those shares. Uh, so, beware the Ides of March. Be sure to buy your uh, stock options. Don't forget and let them expire, Elon. It's a pretty good deal uh, on all those shares you earned the right to purchase. And that can be the end of this video, I think. Um, yeah. Uh, row 1700, it seems like a pretty round number to end this video on. Uh, I always check back in with Loki and see what he's doing. He's still sleeping. And I'll say, if you liked this video, click the like button. Uh, or leave me a comment below that says, Hey James, I liked this video. Uh, or subscribe to my channel over here. All of that is free to do. And thank you to anyone who supports me through Patreon, uh, where you get early access to all these videos the day I upload them, or by joining my YouTube channel as Kathy Kitchler and my executive, uh, other executive producer, Alter Ferguson Financial Dead, at the highest support tier. And I'll see you in the next one.